Hey artists, here we are back in another art tutorial with Mr. White. Today we're talking basic watercolor painting techniques. For this, the very first thing we're going to do once we have our paper lined up and gridded out is going to actually be using either crayon or oil pastel as a wax and some frisket as resists. Resists are materials that you put on paper to prevent the paint from coloring a certain area. Frisket is one that starts out as a liquid, you paint it on, and then it will dry, and then you can eventually peel it off. But while it's dry before you peel it off, you can paint over it, and the paper around it will get colored, and beneath it won't. It's pretty cool. It's a little bit finicky to work with, though. For this exercise, once we have our frisket and wax on, we're going to need a paint set and a few brushes, picking smaller, softer, bristled brushes, a mixing palette, a big cup for washing brushes, and a small one for clean water mixing, and a few paper towels. We'll also want some isopropyl later on, That's not, and some plastic wrap, but neither of those are crucial right now. Start by cleaning your brush, all your brushes, in water, and then drying them in paper towels. The first four effects we're going to do are all about exploring the impact of different levels of wetness of the paper and of paint. The first one is going to be dry brushing. We're going to take a brush that is fairly dry. We're going to load it with some paint direct from the palette, trying not to have a whole lot of water in the brush, as little water as possible, really. We're going to paint on clean, dry paper. And then we're going to make some interesting marks with it. For our next box, we're going to also use dry brushing, holding the brush at a steep angle, painting with a little bit of pigmenty paint at the end of the bristles. But this time, we're going to paint clean water on the box first. We're going to notice a distinct difference in the texture and edge of the marks that we make. Try a couple different brushes again, just like we did on the last one, trying to get a few different effects and to notice what a bigger brush and the smaller brushes will give. For our next couple of effects, we're going to be using wet paint. That is, paint that we've mixed with water. This is a part of why we have our mixing palette and our clean water. We're going to take a brush, get it full of pigment, and then mix it or dilute it in some water in the palette. This gives us a concentrated, or an, an amount of paint that is concentrated and we know what we're doing with. In the first one of these, we're gonna paint that pre-moistened or pre-watered down paint on a dry paper, which is going to be called wet on dry. Again, try a couple different brushes and notice the way that the edges behave and if the paint runs or blooms into other spots. Our final effect, called Wet on Wet, has a clean water wash as a base on the box, and then we use some of that watered down paint. And when we do this one especially, we really see the paint starting to bloom and blend and move around in ways that we don't always anticipate. Wet on Wet is really fun and flexible, but can be hard to control, so it's useful to know. This is a fun one to add a second color into and see the way that they blend, but also the way that they push one another around. You can see, just from this practice, the ways that watercolor can be a little bit challenging to work with. For our next brush, or for our next paint, we're going to load a tiny little round brush with a fair amount of paint direct from the palette, and we're gonna draw a shape. I draw like a shark's head, you can draw any kind of a shape, as long as it's relatively simple, but it has a few parts. Of course, after you draw your little shark head or whatever it is that you choose to draw, you're gonna wash your paintbrush, because we wanna wash after every color. And then we're going to use a watercolor pencil and make a similar sort of shape. Now, both of the effects that we're trying to get here are pretty similar, and it's all about seeing how, after putting paint on, we can blend it and move it around. So, we're drawing the shape with the watercolor pencil, and then I'm going to dip it in clean water, and then just kind of rub it around above the shape that I drew. I'm using a relatively light pressure, and you can see 
that the watercolor pencils do some really interesting things where they blend and act like a paint that you are drawing on. It's pretty cool. Once you have a good amount of pigment on, you also are going to take a, another brush. I like a square brush with, for this task, but any kind of brush that you're comfortable with, and you're going to blend some of those around. For one of them, I try to blend the color from the line outward away from the figure that I drew so that I have a white figure in a colored field. And for the other, I'll do the opposite, trying to pull the color from the line into the figure. It's useful to try both strategies just to see how they work and to hopefully make a couple mistakes here so that when you're making a project of your own, you don't have to make the same mistake again. And our next box is going to be resists, wax, and frisket. Now we already put the base of those on, the frisket and the crayon or, or oil pastel, so these should be ready to go. We're going to mix a relatively wet paint, some water and some paint, with a fairly dark color, and we're going to paint not super aggressively, not super heavily, but we're going to try to fill this box. For the oil pastel resist, I'm not trying to cover over every bit of it, but you do see how when my paint line approaches the part I've colored, it sort of pushes it away. Right now, the frisket is totally covered, but when it's all dry, I'll be able to kind of peel that off and it'll be all cleaned out. For the next effect, we're doing blotting. For this, it's a simple wet on wet, clean water painted on the box with a pigment or a paint, a wet paint that's been watered down on top of it. I like to use a dark color for this. I think it shows the effect more powerfully. And then we're just going to take a paper towel and we're going to blot it or gently and repeatedly press it onto the surface to pull some of that off. It can give us an interesting texture. We're going to pause before going to the box immediately to the right. And at this point, we're going to practice some brush and water control. Off screen, I've mixed four different shades of blue by having a little bit or a few drops of water in three of the different cups or four of the different little dishes in my palette. I took one brush load of blue paint and I put it all of it into one of those little cups. Then I took one brush of that and used it as a seed for the next cup of water, giving me four tints. I colored one long band of the lightest of those colors in the water control box. And now I'm back doing some of the other effects. The next one we're going to do is another wet on wet, so we're painting clean water on the box and watered down paint, and this is called salting. We're gonna use hot, big grained kosher salt on top of some of our paint, and then we're going to dab another color on top of the salt. The salt absorbs the water, pulling with it the pigment, which creates some interesting textures and effects. I recommend a lighter color for the base and a darker color for the part that goes on top, but you can experiment and see what works best for you. For our next effect, we're going to do another wet watered down paint with on a wet paper. And then we're going to paint a fairly large amount of pigment. I'm going to take a moment to mix up some color because I like to try a variety of colors so I can use one I haven't used yet. And after I have that color mixed, I'm going to put a fairly large amount. This is one of the only times where it's okay to have kind of standing or pooling water. We don't want a lot. It shouldn't be a whole puddle, but a little bit is all right. If my paper is dried out in the time it took, I am just going to add a little bit more water. And with 
the isopropyl, I'm going to use a little bit of isopropyl on a Q-tip or possibly a nice, perfectly clean paintbrush, and I'm going to just dab a little bit of that isopropyl on at a time. And what we notice is it sends the water away from wherever we dabbed it, making these kind of cool circles or bubbles, kind of a fun effect. Larger amounts have sort of a ring inside of them, smaller amounts have a cleaner looking circle. For our next and final technique box, other than a little more of the water control boxes, we're going to use plastic wrap. For this one, it's pretty similar to the isopropyl, a wet paint, in, or just painting clean water on the box with a watered down paint with a fairly high amount of pigment put on top of that watered paper. And then we're going to press some crumpled up plastic onto it. We're gonna leave the plastic on there overnight some saran wrap, plastic wrap, and after it's dried, we're gonna peel it off and it'll create a really interesting sort of shattered glass type of effect that's really cool for certain things. Now I'm going to go back to my water control, I'm going to use a small brush, and I'm going to use the second lightest shade when I made those four different tones of blue, 